but they really got some understanding. Okay. okay. We had a little bit of an issue today, again, because we had some new guys at the metal detector that mm, was a little bit jittery and stuff. And, so would it be fair to state that if I look at the five YouTube videos, um, that it'll address the bus stop ramps, the access into the building that you discussed, and then it would also um, you have thoroughly time, talk about the election office issues yes. as well? Okay. If you have time to watch the one that's a full hour length long, okay. it goes through where I'm measuring with the, um, with the level, the areas that are too steep and all that. It shows my audit of the ADA door. The elections office is where I'm talking to, I think it's Tom, Tim, whatever his name is, and the supervisor in the elections office. And I actually pull the monitor on the screen out and show him how it could just be moved to make it more accessible. All of that's on that, in that okay. video and on okay. film. Okay, so I'll do that. If, if you think that's a good idea, I'll go back, review the videos, and then um, I'll reach you at... Okay, so I will do that. I will start with those videos, um, look at that, and then have some discussions here, and then perhaps I'll get advice on what the correct way to move forward is. Um, if we can have a meeting, that would be great. Um, but I'll definitely get back to you and let you know. Yes, ma'am. So. Because I did wait patiently, and you, you all are not the only ones that I'm after right now. I'm going after... Um, city code enforcement next because of all the ADA stuff I have video on here that I can show you now of a 7-Eleven out on White Lane and Union that moved the handicapped spots from in front of their door all the way around and behind the building. Mm -hmm. You know, right away a passage, safest and e most easy point of access to that front door, all of these stores are locally doing that and the, the code enforcement people are allowing it. They're not enforcing it. Even when you go to a lot of these places, the handicap signs are illegal because even the Bakersfield police won't cite someone for parking in the handicap zone if it's not a penalty assessment sign on it. So just because they put the sign up there and put the mark on the ground, that doesn't make it legal. That $250 penalty assessment has to be on there, too, to make it legal. So more than 90% of our handicap spaces here in Bakersfield are illegal. We just came from some places where we saw handicap parking, and it's here in the city, on the streets. They has it marked for a disabled, but on either side of the vehicle, are there any hash marks or anything? So if you're in a van or be like me, you have to get your wheelchair out and your driver and get up on the sidewalk or something, you can't do it because the cars next to you are too close. There's no hash marks or anything. And this is the city. This is the city of Bakersfield. Okay. okay. Well, if you don't mind, I would like to just start with the Kern County area yes, jurisdiction. So I think if I watch those videos and hit the elements that you did, I think we can um, hopefully get back to you and then um, kind of come to a more common ground. I just unfortunately aren't. With with this being the first that I was aware of it, I'm, I'm not able to give direct comment, but I'll at least get everyone in the room that needs to be yes, part aware of that. Now, thank you very much yeah, for no your problem. time and thank consideration. Thank you for coming in. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming in. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And thank you again. Okay. God bless. Okay, little team, time to round them up. <laughs> this is my little support team. Normally, it's uh, other people, you know. But I, I do re remember you down in elections oh, yeah, that one that day. day. Is this your yeah. son? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Just one? Oh, oh no, we have two. Break. The other one's not here right now. Oh, spring break. All children are out. Yeah, <laughs> I have four, hey, and my husband's a school teacher, oh, so, so all of them are on spring break today. Well, I had to go to work. <laughs> And that's what she's going out. for. Yeah. And we're both former subs. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. And she's uh, actually going, she's, what are you taking right now? Oh, we're going to my master's in ed. Yeah, early. early. Yeah. Yeah. What are the elementary be like? Uh, the primary grades or like preschool? Oh, no, primary. God bless you. I, I, mean, I was not given the patience to work with children. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm here because 
I appeared before the Board of Supervisors um, last month in regards to ADA issues. Okay. Um, since then, I've come back and I've done several, you know, evaluations, interviews, rolling around the outside and interior of the building, only on the fourth, on the first floor. Okay. It's an hour-long video, so it's pretty long. Okay. But the Board of Supervisors appear to be extremely concerned okay. about ADA in this building. Okay. The crucial portion of that video is the last 25 minutes of it. Okay. And that shows the direct access and the lack of access coming from the bus stop over there where the main entrance used to be mm -hmm. to the side of the building where the ADA ramp is made and supposed to be accessible to the non-compliance access back here where the garage is where by state, federal, and local statute the pitch on a lift, I mean on a ramp for a person in a wheelchair to roll up or down it's supposed to be 2.1%. Out there, I've discovered 7.2 through 7.5% raises in the lift. That's the reason for the ADA ramp being put on the east side of the building over there. To go further into that, by that being closed down and being forced to go to the back of the building, if a person like me is in a wheelchair, and I'm manual wheelchair, not a power one, and I get off the bus there, I don't have the access that I used to have at the front door. I don't have the access I used to have at the handicap ramp. I have to go all the way around to the back of the building, which is 100 yards or more, push myself up an illegal grade to come to a door that sometimes is working properly and sometimes is not, to be accosted by your rangers, which I have video of all this as well, and then to get in your elections office, and there's no ADA compliance there, and I have video as well as that. And then I'm a chaplain, I'm a pastor. I even received a call today in regards to marrying a couple. That's where I'm supposed to be going when I leave here. When I come in there, there's nothing ADA compliant for me, but when I'm talking to the supervisor down there, I think his name is Tim or Tom, I was talking to him and I showed him how simple it was. It was a monitor that was on the counter that I could just reach up and pull over to me and pull down to where it would have been a compliant. It's just these little simple mm -hmm. things to where you guys are out of compliance, but the main thing is getting off that bus, and it could be raining, it could be 110, 112 degrees in the summer, and to get off that bus and have to travel that distance coming Excuse here. Excuse me, should I help him? No, he'll talk to one of your staff. Oh, he's going to, to the front? Him. Okay. Yeah. And you know, they um, just coming that distance and stuff is a violation directly under right of way of passage under the United States Constitution for people like me, fair and equal access to this property. I addressed this in the Board of Supervisors meeting, but I didn't get a chance to fully address it because it was that open forum. Okay. I'm requesting at this point to be put on the agenda. I don't know if I have to go before the board to request to be put on the agenda, but this item is so hot and such an emergency right now. I believe that this item should be placed, they're, on, they're blacked out right now. Mm -hmm. I believe that this item, they should be call, notified by phone or whatever, and let them know that this is an item that should be on their agenda for that day when they come back in, because them themselves on TV are the ones that requested of their staff for me to be called, for them to check the compliance of the building. It's been almost a month. I've heard nothing. Okay. Um, I, I'm not completely familiar with your situation, but what I would like to do is if I can get your contact information so I can work with some people here at the county and then perhaps maybe arrange some kind type of meeting to where we can all come to the table and figure out what's the best avenue for it. I don't really honestly have that answer for you, but it's something I could look into and then get back to you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Because I know we have met before yes, um, that one day and I tried my best to... Um, you know, make the accommodations, and I know that issue was resolved, so I would like to continue doing that to see what your specific issues are um, and obviously get everyone in the room so we can see what the best way to address it. Yes, ma'am, because yeah. it's not yeah. just here. You know, the county is really, really out of compliance in a lot of areas. Just like I said before, I am the one, and I'm really not your, your county, so I can't disclose it to you. I'm the one that sued Kirk County current medical center and we dropped the suit based on compliance and we didn't want to hurt the county for funding okay. just for attorney fees and stuff like that i didn't receive anything for it or any compensation or nothing 
because we were going after the county for changes, not for finances. And that's what this is. I'm not, I don't even, I had attorneys represent me for the elections from Washington, D.C., because none of the attorneys here really know Constitution. And then, when, you know, ma'am, I have a very serious problem. All of these employees and these elected officials are sworn by our United States Constitution, but none of them know it. If I was to sit down and do one of these interviews with any of our council members, maybe one out of the lot of them would be able to discuss the Constitution with me. I ran into this, not just them, with even police officers. All government officials are sworn by the United States Constitution, and none of them know it. And they yeah. violate people's rights. Really? Well, I, I apologize for you feeling that way, but it would obviously take um, getting the right people in the room to have that discussion. Let me take down a few of your points just so that That's when good. I do get your information in meeting, I can know maybe a few topic areas. I can get that for you. That's fine. That's um, oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so that way, as I'm gathering people, make sure I'll make my best attempt the first time around to get the right people in, in the building. So the first one, can you go over the anything specific that you want kind of addressed at the meeting? The ADA access. At the bus Points stop? From, from, the from the bus stop to the front door to the ADA ramp to the actual point of entry. So you made comment of the front entry, which is now locked, yes. and there is now an issue as going around through the back through the security. Well, actually, in between that, the front door, and then there's an ADA ramp at the east side of the building that is not being used. That's designed and made and placed there tens of thousands of dollars, okay. and it's not in use. Okay, and so the entrance from the rear, which be would be the south side of the building. Yes, what a parking you're, structure. You're finding is. accessibility issues. Extreme. From that point. Okay. The points of level, which in compliance with state federal laws would be a 2.1 percent pitch elevation or the the elevation, okay. and it's actually in some points seven to 7.5 degrees instead of 2.1. It's that far out of compliance. Okay. And then the counters in the election offices, counters. there are none, none that are ADA compliant. Even the boards and stuff to um, go up to, to log in and do your information electronically are all up on the wall where a person in a wheelchair can't reach it. Even the drop box to drop in mail and stuff is not in compliance with the level of ADA requirements. Okay. The um, accessible tables over in the registrar's office for marriages and stuff like that okay. to get your certificates. Their height and level, yes, they're fine, but they have movable barriers in the way. When you come up to it, there's chairs there, and I have a video that shows that the chair was in my way, and the lady that was sitting behind the desk, she didn't get up and come move. She had no intention to. She just sit there. I literally had, you can see me on video, moving the chair, pulling the chair out the way, rolling up there, and her just sitting there, you know, doing her thing, not paying attention to me or anything else. And, you know, I'm like, wow, really? You know, I didn't get any help, you know? Would you be interested in sharing that video? I, I myself haven't seen that. Would you be interested in sharing it with me before the meeting? That way we can, you can try to you, get it addressed. You can actually see what it is that I do and why I do this by going to U.S. Chaplain. Would it be on this card? Most of it is. It should be. U.S. Chaplain, Arthur Gray the Third. U.S. Chaplain. You know what? I think, hold on. One Just in the blue, right up under Brothers in Motion. Uh, U.S. Chaplain, outside. Arthur Gray. The Facebook, other pages and stuff on there with the YouTube. Is it? Sorry. It's going to be right here. Right there in the blue. Oh, okay. The U.S. Chaplain. Okay, it doesn't Black's. have the website, but I'll leave right. a spell. Okay, let's do that again. This, when you put the name in YouTube, it'll come up. Okay. So it's actually a video you've posted on YouTube. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. it's many of them. And there's about five dealing with, actually, the Board of Supervisors here in this building. 
and the, uh, the elections office and stuff like that. Okay. There's quite a few that's specific to this building and the board of supervisors. Okay, so if I go to YouTube, um, U.S. Chaplain Arthur Gray the third. You don't have to put the third, just okay. U.S. Chaplain Arthur Gray, and it'll come up. Okay. And you said five videos. It may be. Kern County. It's, oh, they're all this building? Yes. Okay. Okay. Even we'll some of my interactions with your rangers down there. The first one and stuff were unpleasant the way that they treated me. But once I explained to them and they got talked to and coached by their superiors about ADA and my rights under the First Amendment to film and everything, you can see in the next video, the whole rapport and atmosphere was different. They opened doors for me. They helped me, sir, this, sir, that. But at first it was like, get, get out of here. You can't do this. Yeah.